Hi, welcome to Pleasures of the Text. I wanted to talk about the one book that I read in April, which is Tar Baby by Toni Morrison. I have the Vintage International published edition and we kind of have to do something about these Vintage International like copies. Like they are very lazy <laughs> with the cover art. And I understand it on the level of like, you know, here's a formula that works and we'll stick to it. So they just give Toni Morrison like, these bland, you know, they pick a bold color, they do the cursive, and yeah, you just see this font, you know, it's like Eternal Morrison. And I get that, but like, I'm sorry, they kind of have to do a lot better. Like I've seen so many people on like booktube and like bookstagram like post those gorgeous like vintage copies or like other editions of Toni Morrison novels. And I'm like, where is that energy for vintage? And these are like the really popular ones. But yeah, I read Tar Baby and I had a lot of thoughts and um, kind of like mixed thoughts, I will say. Like I, I enjoyed the novel, but I, I think at the same time, I found certain aspects of it like not really great. It's definitely not my favorite Toni Morrison novel, which this is the second Toni Morrison that I finished and the fourth that I've like read some of. So what is the novel about? Basically this edition has a preface like written by Toni Morrison. I don't know why I care about shit like this. But the original novel was published in 1981 and then the edition that Toni Morrison like wrote that forward is uh, the 2004 version. It's a gorgeous forward. The thing that like pulls you in about like narrative and the purpose of like her writing the novel is her um her grandmother i'm actually going to read a little bit of this my ear is so close to the radio i have to be shouted away lest it ruin my hearing forever or i am cross-legged on the linoleum floor breathing through my mouth wrapped watching the giveaway eyes of the grown-up telling the story all narrative begins for me as listening when i read i listen when i write i listen for silence inflection rhythm rest then comes the image, the picture of the thing that I have to invent. The headless bride in her wedding dress, the forest clearing. There is performance too, zzz, went the saw, accompanied by gesture and cadence. Old man Simon Gillicotti, catch me. I need to use everything, sound, image, performance, to get at the full meaning of the story, because I may be called upon to retell it for the pleasure of adults. Their judgment of my interpretation is critical. Tar Baby and the way Toni Morrison kind of enters the story, um, it's a folk tale. And when I looked it up, like there's a bunch of kind of different renditions, which is the classic like folk tale thing. So my understanding of like the phrase Tar Baby had to do with like, you know, like racism. <laughs> I understood Tar Baby as like, in the same way that I would think of those caricatures, like racial caricatures of black people. And then when you Google it, there's also this other tale that comes in like a collection of like children's books. I was Googling and I was like, oh, it has to do with like, you know, food inequality and like class rights, stuff like that. In the foreword, Toni Morrison tells the story that she heard. At some level, the Tar Baby story begged an often understanding beyond outlaw peasant, outwits, inventive master with wit and cunning. It's clear why the rabbit ate as much lettuce and cabbage as he could. It's clear why the farmer had to stop him. But why a tar figure? and why, in the version I was told, is addressed as a female. That the farmer understand the rabbit so well he could count on its curiosity. But the rabbit isn't curious at all. He passes by the tar baby, casually acknowledging its presence with good morning. It is his being ignored and her being ill-mannered that annoy, then infuriate him. He threatens and strikes her. Now he is stupid. If one of his paws stick, why try another? The inventive farmer has succeeded but gets involved in a form of punishment and having understood motivation so well earlier, now misunderstands completely. Now the stupid rabbit becomes a clever one, pretending that the punishment he fears most is being returned to his own neighborhood. He knows the farmer would reckon this return to the hood as supreme torture, worse than death, so into the briar patch he is unceremoniously gleefully thrown. The figure of Tar, having done its work, falls out of the action of the tale, yet remains not only as a strange silent center, but also as a sticky mediator between master and peasant, plantation owner and slave. Constructed by the farmer to foil and entrap, it moves beyond trickery to art. The principal relationship is not limited to the rabbit and the farmer, it is also between the rabbit and the tar figure. She snares him, he knows it, yet compounds his entanglement, while demanding to be freed. A love story then, 
difficult, unresponsive, but seducing woman and clever anarchic male, each with definitions of independence and domesticity, of safety and danger that clash. So yeah, reading that, I was very much intrigued to see how she would play with it. Something I've always loved is fairy tale, folk tale, um, retellings and adaptations. I think the oral tale genre in, in general is something that I've always found like fascinating. I'm Nigerian and like that is a big component of like stories that you hear. Like I remember like growing up and like my older sister would tell me and my cousins like a lot of like tortoise stories, um, the cunning tortoise, you know, the fox, all of those stories and you hear different variations. It's very particular to like Africa and Caribbean. Honestly, I think even some like don't take my word for this, but I think even some like Latin American like cultures have the oral story tale and the folk tale um, as like a bedrock. And we have the tradition of like a town crier, gossip, I don't want to get into all of that, the grio, you know. Sorry, let me nerd out a bit. <laughs> but it's also in the same way with like reggae music and remixing and that's such a big component and that has to do with rhythm. It's a story that starts off somewhere and then it is retold often and ends up in a different place. It gets different meaning, context, depending on culture, space, time, all of that. I've loved writers like Helena Yeyemi, um, Boy Snowbird, you know, Mr. Fox, like those stories that take well-established um, fairy tales and retell them and it, it's doing something else. So I was very, very curious to see how like, you know, Toni Morrison, amazing writer, would um, take the Tar Baby folktale and you know, reshape it and I was curious to see like how it would play out. So most of the novel takes place in the Caribbean. We're following this man, Valerian Street, his wife Margaret Street, and the two people that work for them. So their black butler, Sydney, and his wife Ondin, who is basically kind of like their um, housemate is not the word I'm thinking of. All that time watching Downton Abbey and I can't. <laughs> I can't think of the word, but um, she basically is like overseeing the domestic duties of the house. And so they lived so many years in like, I think it's Philadelphia, and then Valerian decides to move to um, the Caribbean where he bought a house. He's also bought like an island. The dynamic is very like interesting. Valerian is definitely like the farmer slash like master in the story. Sydney is like his, like Sydney is the very compliant like butler who is taking care of his master. And his wife Ondin, who is a fascinating character, she has a lot of like resentment towards her masters, in particular Margaret Street. We also have Jaden, who is Margaret Street's companion. She's like the ward of Sydney and Ondin. Valerian Street has also become like a patron, like he paid for her education. From her you get like that internalized racism, you know, she's very much been educated in white supremacy classical like studying where she sees like western culture as like the um epitome of like civilization and all of that when i started off reading i couldn't really like make the connection to the tar baby folktale once i tried to like get that off of myself <laughs> of like trying to like you know do a mapping i found the story really compelling like there is this like thrilling sort of like household melodrama to it um, where we're just following these characters sort of seeing their different dynamics um the history that they have amongst themselves there's this insular quality too. It's kind of like a holiday novel, but you know they've been here for years. So the Tar Baby story then figures in when our fugitive appears. So throughout this early element of like the household drama, we've had like little instances to suggest that like there is an intruder in the house. There's like chocolate missing, there's a door left open. And then finally we are introduced to Sun, who is our fugitive. So he's found in Margaret's closet. Sun kind of just like becomes a part of this unit and a lot of the story is like these dynamics of people playing off of each other. That's when things started to like take shape. Valerian is the master, the farmer who is guarding his lot, his family, his household. Sun is the fugitive intruder and then Jaden ends up being the tar baby figure. What then starts to develop after Sun is introduced is this sort of relationship between Sun and Jaden and I think this relationship was where the story started to kind of like fall flat for me. I love the initial sort of like mysterious element to how they begin to like interact. Sun sort of coming in and he's this dark-skinned man, He's he has dreads, like he sort of is a character that like puts a mirror up to um, Jaden, Sydney, and Ondin to sort of like um, 
rethink their understanding of their own blackness and their own selves because it's sort of like self-hating like internalized racism about them um that like sun definitely holds a mirror up to in classic morrison style she doesn't like she's not just going to plainly say it like that so it's going to feel very atmospheric it's like this haunting that comes over them Jaden in particular so their romance sort of like begins in that way it's like erotically fueled by like resentment and this clashing and this like not really understanding each other but like being pulled and like repelled by the other all of this sort of leads to like a boiling point that then ends up with um us kind of like leaving the caribbean and following Jaden and son's romance i think in terms of like the whole thing with um rearranging remixing retelling a folktale that sort of has to be like the point the story sort of started to lose itself and almost like fall apart like once we get off the island Jaden and son like they go to new york and they have this sort of like epic love story thing and it's so hard to buy into it because like it's written so like cheesy and like corny and the funny thing is there's still a lot of like really great and rich things like little moments in that part of the story but i just i don't know i understand like for the tar baby folk tale the rabbit gets ensnared by the tar figure and it ends up not being good for him so there's that like element of like they're not they're good for each other but they're also not good for each other it reminded me a little of um, Nornagas, if an Egyptian cannot speak English, in the way that they were both using each other to like see themselves, also to like expend their resentment on each other. A very toxic like romance. But I don't know, I just kind of ended up being left with like a what's the point? It doesn't really amount to, in my opinion, like anything particularly meaningful. And then I kept being like, we need to get back on the island because here's this wonderful story, here's like this climactic scene that happens and then we like completely shift like focus to this other thing that feels very underdeveloped the intentions are there and they're clear and um it leads to this fascinating question of like what would happen if we're you know bringing this to life like what kind of dynamic will come out of this and then the dynamic ends up not being like really compelling or really anything but like it's so good like the no like despite those issues in plot i think it's such a like enjoyable novel for the sort of thrilling household like drama the very chilling atmospheric um scenes that are like almost horror like um and the classic tony morrison like symbolism like frightful symbols too and, and this will like to totems and like portents like left throughout the story i think even with all the stuff that i've explained there's so much like rich stuff here and a lot of like really wonderful like asides like things i won't forget the characters of like therese and gideon um the mary and like the boy you know the yard yardy boy they're also like foils in a sense like sydney and Andin and Jaden and they're sort of bourgeois like distancing from blackness and from these working class very rooted like black people watching like these wealthy white people like make a claim on the land there's a lot of really great commentary on like that sort of like colonial relationship also um a lot of stuff about like environmentalism and you know there's a way that like, the trees come alive the wind the ocean like all of those things are personified in the novel a lot of wonderful commentary too and like motherhood the relationship between market street and her son michael um that whole thing is just like really fascinating and margaret herself and you know um even those characters are humanized like they could well have been like caricatures but they're not i liked her baby it's i think one of her lesser novels but it's like a lesser tony morrison novel is still better than like a lot of other people's books so let me know if you've read it what your thoughts are on like the stuff that i've talked about if you agree with um how i felt about the novel thank you for watching